So they don't give you these lounges for free. They give you these lounges based on the interest that they're collecting. And if they're going to earn less than half of that, oh, that could be really, really detrimental to the whole credit card industry. Good afternoon, traders. Happy Tuesday. Happy uh, September 24th. Year of our Lord, 2024. I hope you all are ready. All right. I hope you guys are ready. I hope you invited all your friends. Um, because the first rule of outliers should tell everybody about outlier because we're about to trade today. Um, it's been a couple weeks and, uh, I've been jonesing for it. I've been jonesing for it so hard. So if you're here, let me know in the comments. Um, I don't want to dilly dally too much because we got a lot to do today. We've got to trade. Let's go. Let's freaking go. Michael and Michael <laughs> glad y'all are both here. Alex, you made it. Good to see you. Cam, let's rock this thing. Jean-Louis Wes is here. Leo's here. All right, I'm not gonna delay any longer. Let's, uh, oh no, I am gonna delay. I am gonna delay. I saw this and I was like, hang on, we gotta talk about this. Um, we're not gonna watch the whole video, but I do wanna chat on it real quick. So apparently, let me change this playback speed to one and a quarter because my ADHD won't allow me to watch anything at one speed. Apparently, Trump and Bernie Sanders are agreeing on capping credit card interest rates. Um, I love to see the headline in this. Let's move on to the credit card. Uh, this this is interesting. Uh, this is enjoyable and actually kind of fun. Okay, let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. So this all this debate kicked off um, in elite circles after Trump floated an idea at his rallies. So what he said, this was in September 18th, quote, while working Americans catch up, we are going to put a temporary cap on credit card interest oh. rates. Quote, we are going to cap it at around 10%. We can't let them make 25 and 30%. So this is up there with some OG 2016. Well, that's interesting. A temporary cap. I'm curious, uh, curious as to see what would turn off the temporariness of this, right? Now I think about um, financial stocks in this because a lot of credit cards are, I don't know, 20, 25% or something. My wife and I, um, we've had a venture card, Capital One Venture card for years and years. And um, we were in like 2% cash back on everything. And and uh, the summer when we went to Scotland, Ireland, we cashed in a lot of those points to, to pay for some of our plane tickets and whatnot. Uh, we just upgraded to the Venture X card, which came in the mail earlier this week. And it is, dude, this thing is sick. It is thick, heavy metal. Like you drop it on the table, it leaves like little dents in the table. I'm really stoked about that. Um, and one of the things that it comes with is the lounge. Um, and we went to the, the, the lounge at DFW, the Capital One Lounge, and oh my goodness, I have never been treated so amazingly. You thought I was going to say something worse than you. No, it was incredible. It was all you can eat buffet, all you can drink drinks, lounge as long as you want, free Wi-Fi, just like the best place to hang at any airport I've ever been to. And with the, uh, the Venture car that we had, um, my wife and I got in free, but then we had to pay for our kids. Uh, however, with this new card, I'm stoked because um, we get all four of us can go in for free and we get a $300 uh, travel credit each year and a $100 like anniversary credit. And the cost of the card each year is $395. So for literally negative $5, we get this badass card right now. That badass card still has like a 25.49% interest rate or something stupid like that. And that's how they make their money, right? So they don't give you these lounges for free. They give you these lounges based on the interest that they're collecting. And if they're going to earn less than half of that, oh, that could be really, really detrimental to the whole credit card industry, right? Uh, free drinks. You must have been in the pilot's lounge. <laughs> <laughs> kind of Trump so populist yes, stuff, yeah, things like everybody will have the best health care. Mm -hmm. uh, in the more recent era, we have seen three, I think, proposals that really count in this regard. One is saying no tax on tips. That was quickly a proposal also adopted by Kamala Harris. Second is arguably the most consequential for the federal deficit and for the IRS, which is that we, America will not tax Social Security benefits. Third is now this idea that you should cap credit card interest rates. Now, the reason why it, it doesn't sound that crazy, and I actually totally agree with policy, but it would fundamentally change the entire credit card industry overnight. And definitely not to my benefit as one of those guys who plays uh, the points game. Let's put this up there on the screen. So for example, Lawrence Wright, of course, says, quote, 
or sorry, Lauren Summers, says a cap on credit card interest rates is a far more egregious price control than anything Democrats have suggested. I am not enthusiastic, to put it mildly, but Democratic anti-gouging ideas, none hold prices more than a few percent away from market levels. The Trump plan would in many cases constrain credit costs to be 70% or more away from market levels. I do not understand with all of his tariffs, price controls, and arbitrary tax provisions, candidate Trump is supported by market-oriented conservatives. And that is kind of the fun <laughs> debate here, is that even when Trump floats this price control on credit card, so anyway, I love the idea of capping credit cards, uh, credit card interest rates, but I don't know um, long term how realistic that is. I don't know how reliable that will be. And it will absolutely hit the bottom line of any financial stock out there that you're investing in. So that is definitely something to be aware of. Um, let's now change gears and uh, start market analysis. Clicky, clicky. Welcome to the Outlier Trading Room. This is Smart Trading Made Simple. And as an outlier, you know how to save time, make money, start winning with less risk. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Christopher Yule. I've twice been awarded top 100 people in finance. I've been successfully trading since 2009. I'm a partner with Outlier, and this is my style of trading using Outlier, and I call it the golden ticket trading strategy. And Real quick, how does Outlier work? It's a four-step process. Number one, Outlier monitors how investors are reacting to changing market conditions, news, price movements, and the economy. Number two, Outlier determines if investors are acting irrationally fearful or greedy and by how much. Number three, Outlier gives buy and sell signals when these irrational behaviors reach an extreme. Number four, allowing you to get into the stock move before the Outlier move happens. Doesn't that sound great, Sebastian? Now let's talk about today's member highlight. Discord was a little bit quiet over the last 24 hours or so, but one thing Michael had asked about is uh, wondering if I could talk about uh, using ATR for trade setups, profit targeting, exit points, et cetera. Asking for a friend. I got you, my friend. Uh, no, I'm actually keeping a living document on all of the... Keeping a living document on all of the different areas that I am covering every single day inside of the uh, trading strategy, right? From top to bottom. Um, you know, I want to be able to go through and have you be able to articulate what all of this means. And so I am keeping a living document of every single one of these uh, episodes that we are doing while we're not trading, where I'm explaining it in great detail. So I did drop a couple of links out there, uh, not just for Michael, but for anybody. Uh, there's a video on position sizing and on how to use ATR and um, basically how to use, uh, you know, one of the coolest indicators to make sure that no matter what, you are accounting for volatility in every single trade. Uh, yay, that Michael dude is so cool <laughs> when he's not cracking necks and cash and checks, right? So uh, let's move on. Be sure to share your stories in the Discord, right? We're here to help you. And the first rule of outliers, you tell everyone out about outlier. And I know you're already subscribed, so go ahead and tap that like button for me. Uh, that lets YouTube know that they need to share this out with more people as well. So let's start. Let's get ready. Let's look at the 10 over the 20, price over the 50 on the SPY. You know, I have been a little bit cautious on this because right here we've had some, uh, I guess you could call it resistance. I guess you could call it some um, slowdown in momentum. I suppose you could call it that. But either way, we are still with the 10 over the 20, price over the 50. Next, market breadth. Let's go to the market breadth here. Full stocks market breadth using the 10 period moving average. We can see here that it is coasting higher. It's currently at 64%, which is great. I wanna see market breadth moving higher. Um, once it gets up to 75, we will make some adjustments, right? Once it gets over 75, and stops going higher, right? So if it goes from 75, 78, 80, and then back to 78, that's when I stop trading. So this may be a short window, but it is still a window that I'm gonna take advantage of, right, Peter? Glad you're here. So that's that, which means the master key is lit. The master key is unlocking the rest of the trading strategy. Are you ready? Because I sure am. We got the spy signal showing a buy today, freaking finally. Right, we got that buy signal on the spy. So here we go. Market trend is bullish, market breadth is bullish, sector breadth. I looked at all the sectors earlier. The only one that's not bullish right now is real estate. So, with that out of the way, we need to continue moving forward. 
And that is... Well, we don't have anything to reduce risk on, so we're not going to be reducing any risk today. Let's look at the scanner, the screener, right? Pulling in the screener, we've got a lot of criteria. In fact, let's go through that real quick. Positive back test, over a million shares, average daily volume, the buy signal, oscillator moving up, all market caps, over $20. Uh, personally, that's how I like it. The heat map being all of the R values and up to G40, and then the uptrend green overlays, uh, these right here. So that's everything that's included in my scanner. Uh, it's already been run, so we can take a look at it. I have one, two, three, four, five, six that light up for today. I copied those, pasted them in here. All of them are in uh, bullish sectors, so that is good. I'm ready to go with that. And I've already dropped them into Trend Spider here. I call on the outlier bull list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, plus the spy. I forgot. Ran it for um, the the stocks plus the ETFs. So basically same thing as the stock screener with the exception of, I only want to see, where is that at? Outlier bullish apply. I forget which uh, issuer, issuer it is. State Street Global Advisors. These are the ones that are like DIA, XOK, XOB, et cetera. So those are the ones that I look at there. And we got SPLG and SPY both showing a buy signal today. Now, SPLG is the SPY, right? SPLG, in fact, let's go to it real quick. I traded this not long ago, earlier this year. SPLG is exactly the same as the SPY, but it costs like 10%, 15% or so. It's like $67 versus $500. So I'm very interested in that guy. Let's go. Let's continue forward. So um, I do want to talk about this real quick. So this is my flow chart for whenever we get a spy or Q's buy signal. Now, today is a signal day. Is breadth and price both trending in the, in the same direction? Yes. Is the back test positive? Yes. Does the overlay match the trend? So a green overlay match the trend yes is it above yesterday's high yes and yes enter now so i was looking at the pricing on the spy and the only way that i can find one that's under ten dollars which is my personal limit you can do whatever you want i went to the 10 day out i generally like 21 days out uh, then I went to the 80 Delta, which basically is up here, and that's at $15 a share uh, or $15 a strike. So I'm not interested. Uh, so I went like to the seven day. And this was at the 80 Delta right around $11 a, uh, a contract. So like, I don't want to go anywhere closer than seven days out on the spy. Personally, you can do what you want. That's why I, I like to say. But I'm not going to trade that because it's just far too expensive to get into any of these options right now on the SPY. Um, not from extrinsic value, but how deep you got to go to get to the 80 deltas. It's just too expensive uh, for my, my personal preference. So that's okay because we still have SPLG to look at. Next, let's run these through the scanner. And the scanner is going to check for a handful of things. Going to check that there's no order blocks on our way, no earnings in the next three days. The 10, 20, 50 is trending in the direction we want to see, and it's above the prior day's low. Now, basically, one, two, three, four, five, six out of seven. Which one is not on there? Verns, V R N S. And that's because it's coming right up into an order block right here. This order block is far too close for me to want to trade that 5738 versus 5705. No, it's more risk than reward that I can see. But the rest of them look great. So I'm gonna take my list here, I'm gonna filter it down. I'm gonna take off Verns. Can't do that to a merge cell. Didn't you know that? Gosh, I'm not gonna trade SPY. So we're left with these guys here. One, two, three, four, five. Just a little bigger for you. Okay, and the reason being that I did that is I'm going to start with the highest back test and work our way down. Make sure the heat map is not stalled on any of these. So the highest back test is TSM.
All right, we're making sure the heat map's not already stalled on the stock. G9 yesterday, G10 today. That looks good. Actually, let me uh, do this. Start with the aspect to this. Yeah, we can go straight over to TSM right now. TSM. All right, looking at TSM, I'm only going to look at the regular expirations. Um, funny story, I actually had to go and look up my password because it had been far too long. I forgot what it was, but that's okay. I'm looking at the October 18th on TSM. The 80 Delta gets us to nearly $20, so I'm not interested in trading TSM. Moving on to the next one here. The next highest back test is Goldman Sachs. Now, I know Goldman Sachs is going to be overpriced, so we're going to go straight over here. Yeah, the 80 Delta is at nearly $40, so that's not going to work. Let's go on to the next one. 46. Oh, that's part of a merge sale, Chris. Jeez, don't you know? All right, so we're down to three. C-I-E-N, light, and SPLG. SPLG uh, is the next highest back test. Now, I traded SPLG... When did I trade that? Or I thought I did. No, I guess I didn't. I thought I did. Apparently I didn't. Okay. SPLG. October 18th. We're looking at the 80 deltas. Look at this. 310 to 380. That looks good. And then... SPLG, let's go look at the, hang on, where's the button I need? Here. I've got it already pulled up. Okay. Making sure the heat map's not stalled. G19, G20 today. That looks good. Heat map's not already stalled. 21 days to expiration. 250 plus open interest. Less than 50 cent bid ask spread. 20% or less extrinsic value. Generally the 80 delta. That's why I always just go straight through the 80 Delta. It helps me out there. Okay, so 80 Delta has 48 on the open interest in October. That won't work. 74 Delta has 114, which is not going to work either. 66 Delta has 284, but this is 63 cents over 175, which is 36% extrinsic value. So that won't work. Let's do check November though. Maybe we'll get lucky. No. Are there weeklies on this? No. Okay. SPLG, unfortunately, I won't trade because it just doesn't have enough liquidity here. Disappointed, but that's okay. It's part of how it goes. All right, SPLG, we're off of that one. So now we're down to light and scene, C-I-E-N. Now, C-I-E-N, we did trade not long ago, and it was glorious. I made... 28.5% return on, on CIEN on August 20th. So let's go look at CIEN here in Outlier. This one right here, I made 20% on, 28% on, right? Yeah, that was a great trade. And now we're back again on CIEN. Yesterday, G18, today, G21 with the buy signal. Let's go see if we got liquidity. All right, there we go. Looking at the 86 Delta, we've got nearly 3,000 open interest. So that's awesome. Extrinsic value is 49 cents over 640, well less than 10%. Uh, this one here having only three and th these having zeros means that these are probably new strikes. So these should be filled in here in the next few weeks or so. But um, we don't have to stress on that. We can actually go straight to the 55s. And you can see this is only 20 cents wide. Tons of liquidity. 86 Delta. Make sure I got all that. And then this is 24 days out. So that looks great. This is a trade I'm taking. C-I-E-N, October 18th, 55 calls. C-I-E-N. 
October 18th, 55 calls. I get your position sizing. Position sizing. Uh, you can do it one of two ways. You can do it the old school manual way, which super sucks, or instead of doing all that math, just head over into the Discord, go to the VIP Investors Toolkit, download this file right here called the Outlier Power Scanner. That's going to allow you to just literally be able to type this in and put in your account balance, your risk percent, approximate uh, option delta, and it'll give you a number, right? So let's say, for example, you had a $100,000 account. You wanted to risk 7%. There you go. Your option size in that case would be 22. So be sure you get the right position size because this is um, adjusted for volatility. And let's go. CIEN 55 calls. Mid price is 630 right now. Filled at 630. Build at 630. All right, so let's drop this in the Discord. It's been a minute since I've done this. Opening trades. Give me a template that I can copy. Here we go. Today is September 24th. Trade number one bought the October 18th. CIEN. 55 calls or 6.30 when trading at $60.83. Okay, we'll fill in our chart, all the exit points here after we've done um, all of the trading for the day. Let's go to the next one. Is light, L-I-T-E. Brian says, is it not out of order block? No. I don't have any order blocks. I'm sure I'm not hiding anything. Got my 50 order blocks. And my 20. Oh, that's not the right one. Yeah, I don't see any order blocks on that, Brian. Moving on to light, L-I-T-E. We're going to make sure the heat map's not already stalled. Yesterday, G13. Today, G16. Okay, that looks good. Let's go to the option chain. October 18th. We've got some liquidity. We may have to fudge a little bit. Let's see. 70 delta may work. 210 is not quite there. A dollar forty on 480. Hang on, my my phone's ringing. Sorry. 140 or 480. It's 29%. 210. I think 210 would work. 81 cents on 680. That I like better. So we're paying less in extrinsic value. It's not quite to 250, but it's really close. And it's only 12% extrinsic value. So let's go with that. So 680 is the ask price on this. So light October 18th, 55 calls. Okay, that looks good. 20 cents wide. Like I say, we're fudging a little bit here on liquidity, but um, we make it up in the extrinsic value. So all is good. Oh, Michael said, sorry, I was trying to figure out that noise. But yeah, sorry. Somebody's called me twice while we're doing this. Uh, Brian says, got to figure out what's on mine. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I don't know, my friend. I've got. Um... Let me 
Let's go back to scene real quick for Ryan. I've got the 28 and the 50 order blocks. So I don't know, I don't know why it would be showing on yours. But that's okay. Let's keep going. To light. Light, October 18th, 50, 55 calls. Did we just buy 55 calls? On scene? Yeah, we sure did. Huh. It's that kind of day for 55 calls. You sure you get your position size? All right, so light. October 18th, 55 calls. Mid price is 690. Let's see if we can get 690. Build at 690. Yeah, we're getting mid price today. That's two in a row we got mid price. I'll take it. All right, let's drop this. Trade number two. Light. 35 calls. That was at 690, right? Yeah. 690 and trading at current price is 6101. Okay, here, Michael, I'm glad that you asked about ATRs. Let's chat about ATRs real quick. So this ATR is roughly the same, a little bit more on on light all right just a smidge more all right so let's call it what is that 195 so it's about 15 percent more the stock price is roughly the same there's about 15 percent more atr value so your option size is not the same it's close but it's not the same okay so I wanted to mention that. Um, so we're done. Uh, that is all the trades for today. Just those two. Scene and light. And now let's go fill in our charts real quick. Let's start with scene. So we're going to do a half ATR down. One ATR is $1.80. We got in at 60.38. Or 6083, what was it? 6083. 6083. And uh, 90 cents down from there, basically. Because that's half the ATR. It's 59.93. And then uh, go one penny down. One ATR up from here is 6083, 62.63, and then again, 64.43. And that's where we will look to roll if prices get up that high, or when prices get up that high, if and when prices get up that high. How's that sound? And then let's go to light and we'll do the same thing. Oh, let me go back to scene real quick. And let's go ahead and uh, determine where we're going to get out on selling into strength. This up here. Current value is at G21. So I would add 10 to that. So a 10 point spread. So G31. So I like to come in here and type in sell into strength at g31 okay that'll do that let's go to light do the same thing again light is at g16 so it's the same 10 point spread so let's go sell into strength at g26 Okay, and then 
Oh, we got into this at 6101. And half an ATR. It, so the ATR on this is 247. 247. So 2.47 divided by 2. A dollar twenty-three minus sixty-one oh one is fifty-nine seventy-eight. Fifty-nine seventy-eight. And then one ATR up, two forty-seven above our entry price. Sixty-three forty-eight. That work. And again. Sixty-five ninety-five. There we go. Perfect. All right. So that's going to wrap it, right? We understand why we got in. We understand where we're going to get out. We only put on two trades in scene and in light. Add those to my main list. And we will follow them each day, looking to reduce risk before adding any new trades going forward. So I am super stoked to be back to trading. I hope you are too. Um, I can't wait to see just how much we can make with these. And thank you all so much for coming today. Uh, have a fantastic afternoon. And don't forget real quick, this is really important here. Um, this is super important. Thank you so much for being an outlier, right? We couldn't do this without you. And we want to pay you back every single day by helping you save time, make money, and start winning with less risk. And don't forget, we are raising the price of the annual plan next week. It's currently literally 82 cents a day, only $2.99 for the year. So you definitely want to go check that out. And don't forget, the first rule of outlier is to tell everyone about outlier. And do me a favor, if you haven't already, hit the like button to let YouTube know just how awesome it is to be an outlier. Thank you so much for coming today. See you right back here tomorrow. We'll talk soon.